theories about what really happened abounded. One particularly horrifying theory, expounded by the diver John Farrar, holds Kennedy responsible for abandoning Mary Jo Kopechny to a lingering death by suffocation after she had exhausted an air bubble trapped in the submerged car. Farrar saw air coming from the car when it was upturned. That was one of the initial alarm bells that went off in my mind, which led me to believe that she had suffocated uh, rather than drowned. The fact that a great amount of air would have been, been encapsulated in the automobile when it first went into the water. The fact that we found the trunk virtually dry, which is the major egress of air, which would have caused through the trunk itself, because that's the high point of the automobile. And I think most importantly is the fact that she was found in a positively buoyed condition. She was not, she did not drown um, by virtue of the fact that there was, the, her lungs had not filled with water. Barry Jo was a very slim individual and with her lungs evacuated of air, she would have been negatively buoyed, she would have sunk. Uh, it would be a difficult problem to differentiate in an autopsy, even if it was done right away um, before embalming, to differentiate between suffocation and drowning. Uh, certainly the findings that Dr. Mills at least described uh, are more consistent with drowning than plain suffocation, although the pulmonary edema can be very severe in cases of suffocation. Pulmonary edema is a swelling of the tissues of the lungs which can cause internal bleeding. Usually you think in terms of copious amounts of water when an individual drowns. I was surprised at the small amount of water which Dr. Mills was able to remove by compressing her chest. And I was also surprised by the a, a large amount of blood froth. I won't say large, but there was a considerable amount of blood froth which exuded from her mouth and nose and uh, drained down the side of her cheek and in onto her back. If you're in the middle of the night, dark water upside down in a car, in an air bubble, and alive, one would suppose the instinct would be to try to get out of that place, and you'd be moving, scratching, scrambling, doing anything. Even if consciously your mind said, I'm just going to lie here and die, your body, the human organism, is of such a nature that it gets frantic to try to get out. It's just plain obvious. Broken glass, upside down in a car, dark water, dark night, and no marks anywhere. It says to me that um, the woman was not alive, consciously alive, when she drowned. But John Farrar persists in his belief that she was. It's too bad that the girl had to die. Had we been alerted that night, I think that we would have been able to remove her in 25 minutes, which was the same amount of time that we were able to remove her the following day. Did Mary Jo die slowly and horrifically of suffocation, or did she drown within moments? The evidence of the time is scant and opinions have become deeply entrenched. To settle the dispute once and for all, we called in one of America's leading crash experts, Bill Fisher. Fisher incorporated the latest techniques available to forensic science with on-the-spot measurements. When Fisher first looked at pictures of the car, the extent of the damage seemed to indicate that the car might have had a previous collision with a solid object. The absence of any striations or movement markers in the paint shows us that it did not hit anything else prior to going off the bridge. It's the water that caused this damage. And I was puzzled by this. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. But I rode away to a database which gives me the specifications of the vehicle, height, width, length, and the position of the center of gravity. And I found out that the car was 80 inches wide and that it went off the bridge 
at an angle such that when it went off the edge of the bridge the right front tire went off first and as it did so the car would begin to rotate which would have been from the left rear corner to the right front so that when the car came down and hit the water it hit it dead flat on the side so that the water had no place to go it was incompressible and it caused a condition of hydraulic shock and that's what collapsed the side of the car I put together a drawing of the car as it would appear if it were in the pond I also put on the damage in the drawing to compare with the damage shown in the photograph and as you'll recall the photograph shows that the right rear door on the passenger side is ruptured in fact it's peeled back all the way down to the rocker panel which would have been toward the surface now because that door was ruptured the passenger compartment could not have contained any air the water coming into the car from the broken windows and the open window on the driver's side would have percolated right up into and completely filled the passenger compartment within a relatively short period of time. So basically, there's absolutely no reason to believe that an air pocket could have existed in that car for any period of time. I first became aware of this issue when I saw that drawing in a book. And I later questioned Mr. Farrar precisely with what he felt was the reason for a water level to be shown in that diagram and he told me that it was his best estimate or guess as to what the water level might have been when the first car first entered the pond. There is absolutely no scientific reliability or validity connected with that drawing. If you took actual dimensions and the damages of that car and put it on that drawing you'd see that the ruptured door panel goes again up to the rocker panel and the air would have escaped. So it is a fantasy that there would have been uh, water or an air pocket within that car. And it is a myth that has been perpetrated over a number of years that has absolutely no scientific reliability behind it. Bill Fisher's investigation has finally laid the ghost of the air bubble theory, a theory which has diverted attention from the real issues. For the main planks of Kennedy's story remain inconsistent. Too much is left unexplained.